Uh, hi everyone, welcome to our hot takes for Long Overdue. It's our first one for Velo. This is a session that we've rolled on from the merger with EveryNet. It's something that we like to communicate with the community every month as a bit of an update on what the team's been doing. As a lot of time has sort of gone past since we have sort of started the merger, we're going to cover a lot of information in this session. Future sessions will only be about you know four or five minutes, quite compressed and, and topical. Uh, We've got a big panel here today as well. So we've got representatives from the every team that have come in with Pat and Lert, and then obviously familiar faces with Mark and names, Mark and Josh. So basically what we're gonna cover is a lot of the hot topics that have popped up throughout the past couple of months in Telegram in particular. Uh, we will talk through a little bit about what we've got sort of on the plate right now, as well as what we've got coming into the future too. So I'll kick this off with uh, each of you. If you guys can just introduce yourself. I know Mark and Josh, you might be familiar, but we've got some probably some every people watching this. So uh, if everyone can just go through who you are, what you do, and then we'll start getting into the session. So Pat, you want to start your first top left on the screen? So hi, everybody. My name is Pat. I'm coming over from EveryNet, uh, where I was a project lead. Um, no, so my new role at Velo is uh, sort of a hybrid between uh, working on sort of the new product roadmap, but also working on the operation, mainly you know the integrated integration of the two entities. Josh, you're you're next as my viewer. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Josh Brown. I am one of the product managers over at Velo Labs, and uh, looking forward to speaking with all of you today. Mark, everyone knows you, but still. I don't know about that, but uh, yeah, I'm Mark Fisher. I'm the CMO of Velo. Hi, everyone. It's it's uh, it's great to be here. I know I've um, I've dropped into the community a couple of times for some AMAs, and um, you may have seen some of the other um, uh, information we put out. But it's great to be here, and it's uh, it's excellent to spend some time with the rest of the team, giving you an update on everything we've been doing at Velo. Excited to excited to go ahead and do it. I'm Lud. Um, I'm head of commercial and also the partnership. Um, right now. Uh, I'm working for Velo, uh, especially for you know dealing with uh, many partners that we are working right now. Try to because it's right uh, the bear market right now, so we are in the same situation. So we shouldn't go alone, right? That's why uh, I'm trying to find many partners and try to collaborate with them, including Copiapo community and also uh, any product that we have the you know synergy so thanks guys um maybe just myself and michael english i've been uh probably one of the longest serving it's almost feels like serving uh staff that have been working on the project for four and a half years now i've had uh, multiple roles throughout a number of the different companies in the group uh currently my main focus is i guess supporting mark on some of the marketing operations stuff and then some other activities on the side too so i'm kind of across um, a lot of things but uh right now you know, i'm really passionate about the merger with bellow and every and what it will bring so i want to try and ensure that we have a high touch engagement with you guys which is why we're, we're doing this kind of format and uh, make sure you guys are getting the questions answered that you need answered and and it's getting to the team so that they can focus on their job and you know you guys can uh, hopefully be happy. So um, let's roll into the questions. Um, Mark and Pat, this kind, this one is a bit of an open one for the two of you to talk to. So uh, the questions around every merge has happened. It's been two months now, right? So what are some of the sort of challenges that we've faced in bringing the two teams together? Uh, not only from a strategic focus, but also maybe on some of the more operational front. And then what are the, some of the synergies that you think are going to, you know, uh, branch out going forward between the two? So just the open chat between the two, Mark, maybe you can you can kickstart since you're the... Yeah, that's uh, a great question, Mike, uh, and thanks. So if you are if you zoom out a little bit and, and look at what, you know, Velo historically has been uh, has been doing, you know, we're we're here to re-architect the financial infrastructure around um, payments and cross-border international payments, obviously, you know, as, as a key linchpin to that. And, you know, we believe very strongly in the concept of CD5, right? It's, it's, uh, it's a term that's not super well-known, but it's out there in the industry. And really what it means is bringing together 
traditional finance and decentralized finance in a way that makes sense using modern technology that we have today with blockchain and and um, and really some some great infrastructure to provide the benefits of of those technologies for a large portion of the population, right? And so um, so Velo's cross border payment network has been progressing for several years now, signing partnerships with a number of financial institutions and building out what we believe is the future for international payments. That's a very long build. That's um, you know getting traditional financial institutions to move over to blockchain infrastructure and decentralized finance does not happen overnight. And so we've been making material progress on that, um, but it's a, it's a bit of a longer build, right? And what we've been doing most recently with the merger with Every, um, has been to add that true DeFi component into our suite of products that is accessible now and that is accessible to a large portion of the population who are interested in and are excited about DeFi, right? And as Velo, we want to be um, capable of offering solutions across the spectrum of the financial institution uh, landscape. So traditional large financial institutions who are responsible for large cross-border payments um, volume, all the way down to you know, retail um, traders and investors who are interested in participating in DeFi. We want to be able to serve that entire population. And so what we've been working on for the past several months with the merger uh, with Every is really folding that, that product suite that is more focused on DeFi to, um, to uh, the retail population into our overall product suite to have something um, that, that we can offer to, to financial institutions down to um, you know, your everyday uh, retail user. So that's, that's what the focus has been. The challenges have, have also been in, the, in that area because when you're merging two distinct product lines together, even though we have the, uh, the same overarching long-term vision, there are a lot of uh, just day-to-day -day operational details that we need to get right to make sure the products work well together, that the, the product suite is, um, is seamless across the board, and that the user experience from the traditional finance spectrum to the retail spectrum is, um, is, is very coherent. So that's what we've been focused on. And I guess I'll kick it over to Pat, honestly, to, uh, to talk a little bit more about you know, what that DeFi aspect of the merger means and really what you know, the every team now part of the Velo team has been focused on bringing into the project. Yeah, so I guess um, it's a continuation. So um, for every itself, the the goal was, um, you know, it's very similar to Velo, which is to create a CD5 platform, uh, but coming from a fully DeFi perspective, uh, in terms of merging with Velo, obviously, you know, we can continue to focus on what we're trying to build in the DeFi world, but also connect it to the remittance part that Velo is trying to do. Uh, that and also the fact that Velo is also building its own stable coin, uh, having their DeFi part will expand the use case um, of that stable coin as well. Um, on, you know, obviously this is still, you know, we're, I, I think we're still going for the same vision as originally what we had originally. Um, together now, we we feel like we're building out a wider, um, I guess, more end-to-end -end different services in the eco ecosystem that would enhance both from the Velo perspective and from the DeFi perspective as well. Um, personally, I think you know, you know, after the merge, I think other than you know, uh, focusing on a product, I, there's a lot of logistics, operational work that needs to be done. Obviously two teams coming together there needs to be sort of that that whole uh, rearranging of who does what um you know the whole you know other than just on the the hr team part there's also you know finance accounting legal all these other things that that needs to happen uh but it's you know it's the boring parts uh mm -hmm. that that takes a bit of work and takes a bit of fun of you know leaving us less time to build new exciting products mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's um, it's definitely a lot more complex than I think anyone could uh, believe. As you're, you're looking at bringing two completely different focuses, and as much as there's a lot of synergy with the CDFI aspect, because there was a bit of a crossover there between the two yeah. entities, uh, it's still a complex process. Not only just from merging two companies, but also the technical sort of uh, synergies that we're trying to aim for here. Uh, as yeah, well and as you think about and. 
exactly, Mike. And you think about you know the, the the Velo team and what we've been building with FCX, which is a trading platform, and then the you know the Every team, which now has you know has come over and, and into Velo Finance, which is also you know a trading platform. And how do those two oper- um, you know systems work together? And really, you know, from an audience perspective, you know, how do they serve you know a common mm-hmm. audience now? Um, where we were initially, you know, serving separate audiences, and that's just one of many, you know, yeah. both product, strategic, and and technical um, integration you know, issues that you know we've been we've been working through, and so you can multiply that across a number of other mm-hmm. um, you know, integration um, points, and and you see that there's a lot, you know, underneath the hood of the Velo every merger, but in the end, mm-hmm. right, the you know the combined entity will really serve our our audience across as i mentioned the spectrum of cd5 products and that's the mm-hmm. exciting part right because because we've really um exponentially increased our our reach and our product um our product suite mm-hmm. yeah agree speaking of products josh fcx yes mm. yes the coveted Generated FCX. Credit <laughs> exchange that we kick-started in 2020 we're up to our Second iteration, I think we're on the 2.2, 2.3, 2.4. I forget what variant we're on on the new platform. So uh, we've finished all the technical development for FCX. So it is technically ready to go. Now, we previously communicated to the community about uh, a soft launch, which is a very subjective term. Um, so could you just sort of explain a little bit what's happening with FCX now? Like, obviously, the expectation for the community was it would be out by end of August, but that's actually when it's soft launched ready. So what are we looking at in the coming months around what's happening on FCX? Uh, what are some of the key events leading up to its actual launch? And yeah, really, what is that roughly going to be? Wicked. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Um, so yeah, Ed, look, very excited about this. And as Mike just mentioned, technically FCX, for those that don't know, it is live. It's it's currently out there. It's just not, unfortunately not available for the public right now. Two primary reasons for that. So um, currently we're undergoing some some real kind of stress and performance testing, making sure this this platform is you know secure, stable, perfect. Obviously, we want to provide a top tier trading experience for our users. So um, ensuring that the platform is stable, you know, optimally functioning um, is is super important. So the second primary reason um, is we're actually onboarding a market maker into the platform. Now, I don't have to probably tell the community that good market making functions in a trading platform is, is very critical. We need healthy liquidity in that in our platform. So we're taking the time to not only choose the right market maker, but obviously develop them in a seamless and, um, you know, uh, integrate them in a seamless way so that you guys ultimately will have just a rich, healthy, as I said, top tier trading experience in the platform. So super excited about those, but that's kind of where we're at right now. And obviously looking to the future, what all the community has been asking about um, is when they can get their hands into the platform itself. So some exciting news coming kind of mid October, we will be opening up what we're kind of, uh, what we're calling the B2B registration portal. So this will allow a select group of partners um, and some financial institutions to actually uh, become essentially early adopters on FCX, get in, and start trading, give us their initial thoughts, feedback, um, stress test the platform, you know, pick, um, let us know of anything that maybe isn't working exactly as it should, or, or if there's things that can be improved, they will basically become the guinea pigs, the beta testers, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So very excited for that. But then beyond that, um, around mid-November, we will actually open up a closed beta for the community. So definitely stay tuned, um, you know, on our social media, our, our Telegram, our Discord, et cetera. We'll give you guys the heads up when that goes live. So that will be a select few of community members being in the platform trading. Um, and look, all things then being equal, if all goes well, we should hopefully be opening up um, December, kind of the general availability, um, or at least getting a, a larger portion of retail traders into the platform around December. And then the full commercial launch, we're kind of looking for Q1 2023. So we're almost there. We appreciate you guys. Are very excited to get in there. We definitely appreciate your patience. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, it's, it's very enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, enthusiasm, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's it's very important, obviously, that we we make sure it's secure, stable. You know, taking our time to kind of line everything up, slash those T's, dot those I's. So, mm-hmm. um, look, we're very excited. I'm, I'm I'm probably more excited than you guys are to get you in there. Um, and we can't wait to to kind of get your initial feedback, your thoughts, and um, 
uh, you know, tell us how great the platform is once it's live. So again, you know, we're, we're at the home stretch and we definitely appreciate everyone's patience. No, that's good to hear. And just um, on the chain support at launch, it's all Stellar and BSC, or is there anything else? Or is it just Stellar or what's the plan? And what, so, so, what wallets will it support? So just Stellar at launch. Um, we will obviously in the future be looking to to bring additional you know blockchains and functionality in there. So any compatible Stellar wallet um, you'll be able to use on the platform. Um, and yeah, you know it should be pretty familiar to most of our community members what those are. Mm -hmm. But yeah, stay tuned for kind of enhanced functionality as we move forward um, and bring new blockchains in and um, you know new digital assets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. All right, Pat, speaking of uh, products, so this is going to kind of blend from you into Blurt, right? So we obviously brought across a, just a massive suite of functionality for Velo, right? Rather than users having to put their tokens onto a centralized exchange, they can now stake them on velofinance.io, right? It's probably one of the biggest things that the communities uh, brought across. Like what have, <clears throat> you know, talk, coming back to the CDFI part, Obviously, we were both looking at institutionals. Like, how do you find like what we're deploying now on the DeFi space is sort of aligning with what Velo is building with FCX? And is there a, how are the synergies between the two companies from a, a I guess a strategic view on product development for what we're focused on on the DeFi side? So. Um... I think I used this analogy internally before, but the way I see it is um, Velo is building sort of the road network highway um, to bring, I guess, more fiat towards a, a crypto world. Um, whereas every in the past and how we I see how it fits is that we're, we're building basically the shops of uh, you where you can utilize where it where they sort of peppers along the highway. So people who goes onto the Velo network can mm -hmm. then you know sort of explore DeFi um that is adjacent to the the highway uh that's mm -hmm. sort of an analogy i see it um i think in terms of the DeFi product itself you know uh where there's a rebranding exercise that we have to go through uh to fit with the whole velo so you know mm -hmm. what used to be in every dot finance is now velo finance um but beyond that we're trying to build you know i think there's some work that we did in terms of migrating from changing up the sort of like the the staking pools that are available um other than that i think we're just trying to fit and be more integrated with the velo products mm -hmm. uh in terms of the product that every brought uh with the merger which was you know the the you know the velo finance now um there's a solana dex also as well um and I think these will be the cornerstone of what we're trying to build uh, and have it integrated. How do you see the relationship between FCX and the DeFi platform working? Like what would, so communities interested in both, obviously, the DeFi yeah. stuff relatively new. Um, like, they are, FCX. yeah, at this point in time, there's, they're sort of focusing on different, I would say, target users. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the functionality, uh, this is something that is very similar. Obviously, you know, a a spot uh, trading exchange, mm. you know, is very similar whether what assets you you sort mm. of um, trade on it. So that is something that we can develop and let's say adapt to both the FCX in the future, but also on the DeFi products. And that's mm. something that internally we're still figuring out um basically i guess you know one one big effort but utilizing it in different ways to maximize mm -hmm. sort of like the effort that we're trying to do here mm -hmm. okay no it's um yeah, yeah. It's, it, I, I i don't know it must be really exciting i think for the velo guys like without you know yes. just seeing some of the comments in chat there's a lot of interest in the staking part and there's a lot of unfamiliarity as well. So it's, uh, I guess yeah. it's good to have a little bit more utility for utility uh, for Velo overall. So Lert, on the product piece, right? Um, we've got, you know, every, fi every, net yeah. every finance we launched, right? Uh, we have then rebranded that. We've kept some of the core products there. So what, like what's next for Velo Finance? Like what's, what's yeah. the pipeline in the next, say, three to six months? 
So uh, first of all, let me uh, add more information about, uh, I, I mean, the difference between the FCX and our Velo Finance mm -hmm. I think for the FCX, we focus on the foreign equipment. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that allow even B2B or B2C users to, to be together and match together mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for the trading in, in, in that FCX. However, for the Velo Finance, uh, not just only for the, you know, as the instrument for the DeFi platform, mm -hmm. not just only for our Velo uh, ecosystem, but we are trying to provide as an accelerator or incubator for other token project partners uh, to mm -hmm. use our platform as the, you know, as the core foundation when they would like to launch in the DeFi. So we provide the swapping, mm -hmm. new farming, staking for, for those, uh, you know, token project partners mm -hmm. that you know can can be launched uh, on our deck easily and also we also have the other book style like in the solana decks that mm -hmm. those token projects partner can be listed on uh, those solana decks and they can build their trading volume profile in mm -hmm. order to you know like the uh, list in higher tier and like the centralized exchange who be your binance for the Mm -hmm. yeah. Like we we did sort of hash around a launch pad to support that. Like how yeah. you know, say someone's got a new project kicking off and they've just heard what you said. How like what's the I guess what's the process for them to get involved in that? Are we going to be pushing a launch pad out this year, or is it still just going to be someone send you an email and go through the motion? No, in indeed in in DeFi, yeah, you know, it's permissionless, so they can list uh easily in in our deck even in the you know in the u farming or even in the solana decks however it's kind of like if they you know connect directly to us as uh, our partner project so we can you know like uh, educate them as uh, as an incubate uh, in try to incubate them uh, for to be the you know the potential defi project mm. as an instrument yeah, and, and my yeah mike if i if i can jump in there also i think you know what you're getting at is how are we going to make it easy and and pretty seamless for new projects to connect with us and, and launch on on the platform right and i think the, the answer is absolutely yes you know that that concept of a launch pad um or or an easy on-ramp is certainly something that i know lurch has been thinking about i know pat's been thinking about and, and we do intend to you know to make something like that available um uh, rather soon so that it's easier for projects to you know to list and and, and um yeah yep so what about on the the velo finance platform we've got the basic sort of you know dex products that are fairly common with DeFi. so we've got a simple exchange for a select range of bsc sort of bp20 format tokens currently uh obviously we have the direct exchange which um we just sort of dropped now for people that have every and want to swap the velo so that's there We've got the liquidity pools. Uh, we've got the yield farming. What like what else is coming up? Like because obviously everyone's waiting now for FCX. So let's just say it's not six months, but let's just say worst case it's six months. So what's going to keep the community interested? What what extra utility can we bring to the platform yeah. for them to you know maximize them holding Velo? Yes, of course. Uh, really short term uh, that we are going to launch soon. Of course, we are going to provide the new staking pool yeah and uh like uh, the lock staking pool for velo tokens yeah you you can try to for especially for the to velo holder token they can come to our velo finance.io and uh, stake those tokens and earn high yield from the lock staking pool very soon and yeah for for other project uh sorry for other products we are Partnering with uh, you know very popular uh, like uh, in the perpetual trading uh, field, so we are trying to launch uh, the new product like uh, doing the perpetual trading very soon also. Mm -hmm. And why we try to start with the perpetual trading because we see that in the trading business. Uh, the perpetual trading is very, very, you know, well known, popular, and you know, many retail users come to trade 
in in this field yeah and it we can you know have more utility for our velo token in mm -hmm. in that uh perpetual trading features what about the um the cross chain bridge as it stands now it's a bit hands on -y. so are we looking at sort of either doing an update to that so that it's a lot more the user experience is a lot better will that be something that we'll see on on velo finance or will it remain kind of a separate thing yeah in, indeed we also have the you know uh, before we we have every hub and we support like the bsc chain to uh mm -hmm. chain. Mm -hmm. yeah but right now uh after we merge with velo we are trying to have uh more chains uh to be able to bridge like not just only the evm chain but mm. also solana chain and you know like and the stellar chain mm. also mm -hmm. okay i, awesome. I think uh we can launch uh, the new bridge like uh early of october mm. so stay tuned okay um i guess you, you mentioned a little bit about partnerships with like Apollo X obviously being a, a technology partner. And I guess, you know, this is open for, you know, Mark, Pat, uh, Josh, I know you're pretty much heavily in prod in product, but what other sort of partnerships are we working on in the background that would, would the community could expect to see coming in the next couple of months? Yeah, you know, we're working on expanding our custody services. Uh, we're working on, you know, partnerships with other chains. Uh, we're, we're working on listing our velo token at different exchanges so there's a lot of things we're working on in terms of partnerships nothing that um i think we can put down names uh at this point um but you know there are things like we're working on different listing our velo token in different exchanges to increase exposure um working on to expand you know things like custody services um you know and other projects that we want to partner with uh to work together so these are something that are in the works um behind the scene um and we'll obviously announce when when things are more official. Good stuff, Mark. There's obviously a uh, a lot of stuff we've covered. I, I guess that means the, there's a lot of material that we're going to start to be sharing with the community. Obviously, uh, yeah. there's going to be a lot of questions about this. Uh, I'm sure, sure we'll have to have an AMA coming up. Uh, what what kind of material can people sort of start to see over the coming months as we look at you know pushing out all of these new products and partnership yeah. and everything else what's the plan yeah. for the next six months a uh, great question and, and obviously you know, a nice seg segue from what pat mentioned you know as as a number of those things materialize no doubt on, from a marketing perspective and, and frankly communications perspective you know we'll be excited to share that with the community so as you mentioned you know, new listings new partnerships etc all the things that are in the works that we can't quite go into right now um for, for obvious reasons as soon as we can uh we'll be able to we will make sure to inform the community and and provide as much information uh as early as possible but i can say a couple things that that are uh, really exciting right now number one you know on starting on uh the 15th and you may have seen the little teaser that we that we put out you know we have um, a new product that we'll be launching on Velo finance uh that we're excited to bring to market um around and it's it's specifically related to trading alert talked about that uh just just a few moments ago but we're excited obviously to you know to bring that to market and we'll have more information on that including uh, materials you can read about blog posts etc uh coming out uh almost concurrent with this video right uh, we also have some exciting uh, staking pools that we'll be launching um uh, again like almost immediately that the community can take part in and that will be um, ongoing, right? So that we we want to make sure people have the ability to engage not just with Velo products, but obviously you know earn on their Velo. So we'll be launching that. Um, and then I think you know beyond that, and those are some immediate term things. We've got a lot of great content planned for the community that will keep the um, keep what the project is doing and what we're working on more top of mind than we've been able to do in the past. And so in addition to some AMAs that we have coming up at the end of the month with myself and Mike Cohen's, our, the CEO of, of Velo. We have um, a lot more blog content coming out on our various products that you can expect to see, as well as posts in the community. And then, um, in addition to that, we have uh, we will have some partnerships to announce uh, and some interesting projects we've been working on um, toward the end of September and into October. 
um, that we'll be able to talk about. So there's a lot, obviously, on the you know on the project side that we're we're working to materialize and turn around to the community. And as soon as we can do those things, we'll we'll be excited to share them with you. But as I mentioned, uh, right now, just two you know two very exciting um, product launches um, in the next in the next uh, few days around trading and, and staking that the community can expect. So I'll leave it there. Obviously, you know, as a marketer, I'm I'm excited to share whatever we can, when we can, and um, and Mike, you know, as you've been in the community a lot, Josh, you've also spent you know plenty of time in the community. You know how engaged our community is and how much appetite they have for uh, for new products and great content. And so, you know, we'll be sharing everything as as soon as we can. Uh, so, Mark, yeah, on obviously we've got a lot of stuff coming out. Um, there's a lot of in, really interesting pieces that we'll be pushing out to the community but what are we actually doing to grow the community from what we have now because we've got two different areas to focus on right institutionals as you know bd guys will handle that but what about on the retail side like what are we looking at what markets are we looking to tap into or, or initiatives are we looking to pursue to grow bring more people into the bellow community sure well, i think i think it all starts <clears throat> excuse me it all starts with engagement with the community and and so a being more active and engaging with the community and giving them things to to engage with us about is um, is really important. And so, what we're talking about here on this call, stepping up, you know, the amount of content we're producing, giving people a clear roadmap to understand and and um, and give us feedback on, and kind of you know go back and forth on those things is really important because we want that transparency. And then we're also expanding ways for people to engage with us. So obviously, Telegram has been you know has been historically. You know, one of the ways that people have have come together and engaged with Velo, but we've recently opened up our Discord server, right? And we want people to understand that on that Discord server, not only will they be able to kind of do some of the prior, you know, in, uh, uh, engagement they've they've been used to, but we'll be able they'll be able to engage with more of the tech side of Velo as you know as our resources come online there, and they'll have more like discrete opportunities to engage on various products um, in some of the channels there, whether it's FCX or whether it's some of the Velo finance products. You know, we'll give opportunities on Discord for people to have focused discussions. And we want to raise those focused discussions, right? And then from a community growth perspective, using those platforms, we anticipate in various you know, regions you know, that, we're, that we're expanding into across Southeast Asia to have you know, focused groups in each of those regions, right? So people can come together in those community areas with content that we're producing for those areas. And then we're also looking at some offline ways to, for people to engage, right? I mean, we all live in an online world here, um, especially you know um, in, in DeFi, but there's still a lot of value to coming together um, outside of, of your online venues and, and communicating um, and engaging with, with Velo enthusiasts. And so you know, we recently just held a, a talk. You can find it on our, our social channels. Um, around uh, building you know the future of, of cd5 and and really what that means um in thailand uh, we look forward to doing more offline events um, and, and bringing the community together and so those initiatives are in the works as well um and, and obviously you know as things build you know we'll look for more ways to engage the community with with ways for members to become more evangelists and champions of what bella is doing ambassadors for the project um, fun ways to engage with us games etc um, gamifying some of the interaction. And so we're, we're excited about that community growth aspect. Um, and, and we've got, you know, some steps planned over the next, you know, several months, you know, that will coincide with our product roadmap to grow the community. Um, speaking of the community, so there's uh, a couple of burning questions, reoccurring questions, which um, I want us to sort of answer as much as we can. Uh, obviously, some things need a bit more time because they're quite complex. Uh, but speaking of releasing updates roadmap where are mm -hmm. we on getting the sort of consolidated entity roadmap out so locking in some not definitive dates but at least some rough timelines on when when these things are happening and I, I, are we able to project into mid next year at all i think you know internally obviously what mark mentioned is really what's been going on which we were figuring things out um, I think after you know the merger, now we have a pretty clear, clear idea of where we want to go, uh, what we're trying to build, you know, what it would look like. Um, now the work is actually sort of putting it down in a nice, simple graphic that you know we can communicate to everybody uh, internally and also externally that people can understand. I would say 
we're looking to get this out you know i would say let's say a month from now uh you mm -hmm. just, you know we will try to very heavily trying to communicate to the community you know of of the the short-term plan a short and long-term plan basically mm -hmm. are we able to how, how far are we able to go into next year do you think like Obviously, there's one thing that I know of we're sort of pushing for next year, but I think that's still a bit uncertain. Is there much after the FCX launch? I think we have a pretty clear idea of what work needs to be done and, you know, at the capacity that we have for the next year. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a lot of things that we want to add and, like, things we would need. Uh, but to be honest, like we, there's no way that we can actually do those yeah. things within the next year uh, because of what we know we were gonna be doing for the, you know the next twelve months. Um, yeah. But you know, we'll, we'll obviously you know project out of things we think would we would we will be revisiting and expanding mm -hmm. and working on. Um, I guess in the next eighteen to to twenty four months. Okay, good stuff. Um, <clears throat> Second one, I'll go through these in order of um, burning questions and how much they're burning hole in the, the Telegram group chat. USDV, it just kind of appeared on Velo Finance, but there was no real update what it's for. So um, who wants to answer that? Josh, Lert? I, I can take a stab at this. Okay. <laughs> Lert, feel free to interrupt. Um, so yeah, can I understand how the community may have been uh, you know, confused for lack of a better word when this, this digital asset appeared. But the simplest way to look at it is for FCX, we've kind of created a, a kind of a separate tranche of digital assets that are exclusively available on that platform for trading. Mm -hmm. There are Velo digital assets in our cross-border remittance network that obviously fuel our cross-border remittance, provide mm -hmm. liquidity and, and, you know, transfer value across that network. We made the decision internally, at least at this stage, to keep the FCX trading digital assets separate from those. Um, okay. So that's the simplest way to look at it. Um, you know, effectively, it's still got that one-to-one -one ratio, depending on the currency it's it's pegged to, mm -hmm. um, but it's only tradable on the FCX platform. And obviously, with that, you know, once once you're able to get into the FCX platform, you then have opportunities to to take part in the staking and the pools that we've created for those digital assets. So USDV is the only one out there right now, but in the future, we do hopefully have some plans to kind of. Um, you know, just taking on all all digital assets, but for now it's just been that USDV. And, and again, the simplest way to think of it is it's just siloed to FCX and FCX trading. All right. Lert, so I don't, know, I don't know if you'd add anything to that, Lert. Well, just to add, I think we're trying to work our way a, a scheme that would utilize USDV on the DeFi product itself as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, we're we're working on that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. For a user to get on FCX at the moment, right? So if we don't have Velo as part of it, because obviously the core of the DRS is is the heart of it is the Velo token, right? The fiat in locked in escrow, get Velo issue digital fiat based on what your Velo holdings are. So that's for the big institutionals, for the major traditional finance guys. So if a retail user wants to get in on the Velo, they don't have access to the digital fiat that is sort of in the bags of all the institutionals, they will have to buy the USDV and then they can participate in trading on the platform. Is that what it means? For the Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. And right now, the only mechanism, uh, you know, let's consider the platform is open. You can register, obviously, and you can get into FCX. Um, USDC will be the mechanism that allows you to, to buy USDV. Um, and then once okay. you've got that. And that's on Stellar. That's on Stellar. Stellar exactly right. All right. Yeah. So then are we setting up, and sorry to throw this out in the weeds, I'll come because I, you know, I just thought about it then and I'll edit that out. So are we basically going to have a bridge? So if people buy or swap or say they're Velo for USDV on Velo, velofinance.io, can they then bridge that into the Stellar network? And does that come across as a, a Stellar USDV token or does it swap into a USDC token that they then put on FCX? Or is there some mechanism where they can transfer the USDV from the VEP20 token onto FCX and then somehow that gets wrapped into a token they can use on FCX? Like no, what's, the point of, what's the point <laughs> of the USDV on VEP20 at this stage? Well, do you have the details on that? Because mm. yeah. we have USDV on Velo Finance. So what's what's the point of it on Velo Finance? Yeah, indeed. As uh, Pat said, uh, 
we are going to have them on our DeFi product also. Mm. And I, I think that uh, to to easily understand it is that uh, you just imagine that if we have uses of USDV, mm. so you just hold the Velo token, mm. and the entire of Velo token is gonna be you know it depends on the utility of USDV. So mm. if we have our platform and allow our you know users come to trade in our platform come to do any activities and using the usdv after that i think uh it's gonna reflect back to the velo token holders mm -hmm. okay so i think the other thing that's important to mention is that fcx will support other chains eventually right yeah i was just yeah. going to tease that mike um i can't put any timelines to it but there is plans to support a whole range of digital assets yeah. beyond what's on there right now at launch that's including the velo token some have even hinted at maybe bitcoin being on there but again can't put any timelines to it but there's definitely plans in the works in terms mm -hmm. of our future plans mm -hmm. of okay. expanding that digital asset you know suite and repertoire mm -hmm. okay so so basically having the usdv on the on velo.finance on velofinance.io uh eventually fcx will support other chains including binance smart chain so it's right now it's there in preparation on velofinance.io for the other products that will come along, but there will actually be a mechanism to bridge those tokens onto FCX and be able to trade with them. But currently it's looking at the USDC on Stellar and then they buy the USDV on the platform to be able to participate. Correct. Okay, all right, good stuff. Yep, good summary. All righty, um, number three, tokenomics. We now have two entities with two separate tokens merged together. Obviously, every uh, total circulating supply is nowhere near what it's total. Sorry, total. I shouldn't say total. Uh, obviously, every circulating supply is nowhere near its total supply uh, because the project wasn't running long enough to really get all, get it everything out and up and running. But there is still an addition of the DeFi product functionality. So Velo is now issuing tokens through staking rewards and you also have the investors coming in on the tokenomics front so what's happening in regards to providing an update on the tokenomics in general to incorporate the DeFi functionality like is that just going to be rebalanced out of some of the additional pools and when can we sort of start to see an update on the circulating supply that's posted on uh, coin market cap and coin gecko we're changing it you know there's a lot of things that we want to fix you know in terms of develop tokenomics with the USDV itself, you know, we want mm -hmm. to learn about what went wrong with Luna UST and try mm -hmm. to incorporate, you know, that lesson into improving the USDV tokenomic. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of things that we're working on um, of updating the tokenomics. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can't really say anything specific right now, but that's something very sensitive that we recognize the community is concerned with. Mm -hmm. uh that's something that we are also uh, trying to work very hard but giving the sensitivity there's not much we can disclose mm -hmm. at this point that's fair yeah it is complex it's not a simple a simple matter uh, what about on the circulating supply do we have like that's obviously from <clears throat> community's perspective we should have an understanding on whatever is in circulation at any given point in time because <clears throat> it's a it's a spreadsheet I mean, that, that's something that we are working with mm -hmm. um you know that's something that we've tried to i guess calculate you know from what's been out there in different mm -hmm. forms uh and that's something that we'll be updating through the coin market cap uh mm -hmm. to get that as the updated number of circulating supply okay rough eta on that like do, i know it's tied tightly to the token yeah you know um so we we have started to work with a coin market cap um uh this is a bit of a difficulty because I think CoinMarketCap uses a bot that sort mm -hmm. of reads through the the Excel Some sheet data. submitted. <laughs> and uh, I'm talking about from experience that we've, we've done this before for every token. Oh, very um, yeah. There, There's a few back and forth that, you know, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes we don't understand what very specific things that we have to put in so the bot recognizes. So there's mm -hmm. a back and forth of like, your token, your, your circular supply is not verified, you know, go back and do this. So uh so yeah. that, that process has started uh but it may just take some time 
yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah I remember when we went through that with every. It was it was quite complex. Uh, so the token price is obviously a big one right now. Uh, there's a lot of market volatility, which is completely out of our control. But there is obviously a lot of concern from the community that we're not doing enough to sort of stop selling pressure on the token. Like, uh, what are some of the initiatives that we're looking to implement to try and, you know, in, in give people more, I guess, uh, more to do with their tokens other than just dump it on a centralized exchange? Well, I think, I mean, that's, it's a good question, right? And I, um, overall, and I'd say some of the things that, that I would, I would try to focus on some of the, the key points that, that Lert and Pat have, have made previously around products we're bringing to market to allow people to engage with the ecosystem right, and engage mm -hmm. with our, with, with the Velo platform. So the staking pools that we'll be, that we'll be launching, right? The, like the new opportunities on Velo finance that we'll be launching around, you know, perpetual trading that, that they, mm -hmm. they hinted about and when that's coming. Um, you know, engaging in um, in some of our, our our new um kind of our new products that we're bringing to market, those are things that we want to make sure that we communicate to the community so they know that uh, there are opportunities to a you know continue to you know to stake their tokens or to use their you know their their velo for some of the ecosystem products. And then beyond that, right, looking looking down the line of you know the various partnerships and some of the other product announcements that we have coming. Yeah, I think there's a lot of robust um, you know, product work we're doing that will continue to build the ecosystem, and especially as some of the other partnerships come online, uh, you'll see that you know the you know the uh, the synergy of that throughout the Velo ecosystem. And so, you mm -hmm. know, what I can say about you know stopping selling pressure, et cetera, is just to understand that you know we are you know we we have opportunities for people to engage with uh, with mm -hmm. the Velo platform in a number of ways, and both short term and long term. You know, to um, you know, to to generate yield, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that we're we're bringing robust things to market for our you know, for our community. There, mm. I, and I think you may have other things to add, but I think it's important to note that it's like the team is still very active, right? Like yeah. we're all here. It's eleven fifteen yeah. p.m. Yeah. in Thailand at the moment, right? You you had to roll out of bed literally to do this call. The team is still very committed to delivering. It's just that, like you mentioned at the top of this call, Mark, this is not a simple thing. We're not spitting out yeah. 101 different varieties and we're doing hundred the second variety of a DEX or some financial DeFi platform with, you know, or an NFT marketplace, right? We are rebuilding financial infrastructure to serve the unbanked, yeah. underbanked, and then de just deliver financial products and services to all. It's not something you can do in six to 12 months a bit more complex than maybe we thought but we've had to keep pace with the crypto industry right so um, uh, it's well it's well you know, said and it's, that's yeah i mean i would say it's that's well said and it's and it's it's an interesting and unique challenge of the space we're in is that moving traditional finance to DeFi is is not an overnight or even one year mm -hmm. you know two-year proposition it is a multi-year proposition but it is a ma it's a massive change right and so that's mm -hmm. what we're excited about um that velo is that the long-term like change that we will be affecting on the financial system is profound that's very mm -hmm. different from a short-term nft project like you mentioned or yeah. something like that and so it's really important for the community to understand that this is a long-term like transformational mm -hmm. project and mm -hmm. um and yeah there are some bumps here at the beginning but this is really just the first or second inning to use a U.S. baseball analogy mm -hmm. of uh, of you know what we're what we're what we're doing, and so you know we we anticipate obviously a lot more to to come, and yeah. that's the unique challenge is working in the DeFi space when everything is immediate, urgent, and people uh, are used to yeah. like very fast, immediate changes. Yeah. Um, you know those those things take time when when you're talking about about really moving a large traditional system to decentralized finance, but at the same time. This is what the, the every merger is bringing to, to Velo. Some of the ways mm -hmm. to engage in a more immediate DeFi nature with uh, with our platform. And so, you know, we're we're working on both, uh, but it's it's a long term mm -hmm. build. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, and we're it, here. It we're banks, committed to it. it. It took banks ten to twelve years to go from magnetic tapes to internet banking yeah. and doing yeah. instant transactions, right? And even then, the cross border stuff. Uh, that's available in the market is only just sort of starting to happen even though 
that tech's been around for almost a decade too, right? Yeah. Like Swift yeah. Network shouldn't take as long as it does, realistically. But yeah, yeah it, is, I it, is. Think it, it worth nothing if we cannot deliver the the organic product. You know, if we cannot deliver the the real use case that uh, we bring. Mm. people to come to our ecosystem mm. so that's why uh i think and and many projects uh, face the same problem at this winter market so but still our project is still working we have the team that's still working for the mm. not just the short term but also the long term as matt said so this is a lot longer than was originally planned uh so I hope everyone has hung around to the end. Uh, guys, was there anything you wanted to sort of cover in closing with the community? Obviously, we'll do this again next month. Probably not as extensive. We had a lot to cover. We'll try and keep it back to the four to five minute chunks. But is there anything any, anyone wanted to add just as a free form to the community? I just say I appreciate the engagement from the community. I know that we have a lot of passion out there uh, about the Velo project. I understand, you know, the passion both both uh, on, on all sides, and it's exciting for us to be able to continue to just come together and bring more things for the community to engage in. So please continue to be passionate. We appreciate your feedback, um, and I'm excited, obviously, for the product roadmap that the you know the folks here talked about and finding ways from a marketing perspective to really shine a light on that for the community. So thank you. That's uh, that's what I'd say in in conclusion. Pat, since you're kind of the rep from the, the DeFi space, I guess, anything from you? Um, yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of exciting things that are happening in the background. I think in the next step, we'll try, we'll, we'll try to be better at communicating and sharing that information after we work through the details with the community and hopefully get uh, the community as excited as we are with what we're building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's some um, exciting times ahead. So we, we do actually appreciate everybody's patience. Uh, I know the Telegram can get very heated at times. Uh, we'll always be there to answer. We're not, we're not just because someone's upset. We're not going to ban people unless it gets out of control. Uh, we do want to be held accountable. We, if you have a, a justified complaint or concern, it is an open space for you to come in and ask. Uh, we don't want to be trying to see, be seen to be hiding uh, anything from you guys as much as obviously we can't share everything but we we do want to be held accountable and you guys are the ones that keep us accountable so thanks very much for hanging in there i'm not sure exactly how long this video is going to be by the time it's compiled and released but i'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot longer than the intended 10 minutes than was originally planned but i hope you guys got uh, something out of it and we look forward to talking to you again uh in around a month from now and thanks guys for your time this evening and this morning and thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Take care.